Yo ho, me hearties, and welcome back to Piratical History with your host, Drew Abernathy. Yar. Hey, everybody, welcome back, and thanks for joining me. And this week, we're going to take a look at the life of the pirate known as Henry Every. Now, Henry Every looks to have been born in 1659 in a village outside of Plymouth in Devonshire, England, there in the southeast of the country. And in 1690, looks like he married a Dorothy Arthur, but there's no evidence that they had any kids. He was a natural-born sailor from an early age, and in 1689, in the March of that year, that was during the Nine Years' War between England and France. Every was made a midshipman aboard the HMS Rupert, and that was captained by Sir Francis Wheeler. Naval records showed that Henry would send his money back home and wouldn't spend his money on frivolous things like the rest of the uh, sailors would so he is pretty frugal with his money which was pretty smart for the then young man about mid 1689 uh, Rupert helped the Rupert helped capture a French convoy off Brest France and every would soon be promoted to master's mate at the end of July in 1690 he joined Wheeler on the larger ship the HMS Albemarle and on the 29th of August 1690 he was discharged from the Royal Navy in 1691, he would get involved in the transatlantic slave trade, working mostly along the Guinea coast. And English historian Douglas Bodding said, as a slaver, Avery seems to have been more devious than most other practitioners of that sordid craft. This would be evident in the writings of Captain Thomas Phillips in 1693 that said that Long Ben Avery, that was his nickname, would trick slave traders from Guinea onto the ship by waving friendly colors, get them on the ship with the slaves that they were selling, and then chain them up alongside the slaves and sail them across the Atlantic and sell them as slaves in the New World. In spring of 1693, he would go back to England and join this little flotilla of four former warships that were being used as trade ships, uh, with their allies in Spain to try and reinvigorate the uh, English economy after having lost so much loot in their war with France over the previous nine years. And he would become the first mate on the ship known as the Charles II, and he would become that first mate because of his experience in the Royal Navy. In August of 1693, these four ships, Charles II included with a whole bunch of other ships, would sail down the Thames, and they thought it's just going to be a two-week journey from England to Spain. Seems simple enough, right? Oh, no. It took five months, five months for them to get from England to Spain. And when they got to Spain there in Corona, they were basically locked into the harbor. They couldn't go anywhere to start their uh, trade because they didn't have the proper papers from Madrid, so they would have to wait there in Madrid. And while they're on the ship, the men were like, we haven't been paid in a while, so you know what, what's going on here? Some of the men thought they were going to be sold into slavery there in Spain. And the captains of the ship were thinking, hmm, if they have money, that means they don't need us. And if they go into Spain to work, they can earn money and basically escape from our ships. So they basically made them indentured servants there on the ships and kept them trapped while they were in port for several, almost a year. They were trapped in port there, either traveling or trapped in port. They were there for a long time. In May of 1694, things are starting to get very interesting because they are starting to get antsy on those ships. Uh, the men threatened to strike if they had if their demands weren't met and every started recruiting men behind the scenes. Uh, and since he was of a lower class, the rest of the men trusted him and he's now starting to gain a lot of favor among the crew. On the 7th of May, 1694, every would lead a bloodless mutiny with 25 men and he would overthrow captain Gibson, who was the captain of the Charles II, And he was sick in bed and they were like, Hey, you could go to one of the other ships and let us take the Charles II, and we will spare your life. And so some of the men did that. They went on to one of the other three ships, while every uh, will look at the rest of the men on the ship and say, hey, 
is it a power slide for y'all? And they would go, yo ho, let's go. And they decided to head towards the Indian Ocean. Some say they heard the tales of Thomas II, you know, the pirate from Rhode Island. Not sure if that's true or not, but guess what? They started heading down the west coast of Africa towards the Cape of Good Hope to go around towards the Indian Ocean. They would take their first prize a couple months later off the coast off the coast of Cape Verde, those are islands, right? Yeah. And they robbed three large English merchantmen ships. Soon after that, they would go off the coast of Guinea, take a chieftain and his consorts, and make them as slaves there aboard the Charles II, which is now known as the Fancy. And uh, after they would do that, they would stop off the coast of Benin and basically rip out a few of the decks underneath to lighten the fancy and to make it faster. Some historians say that the fancy would be the fastest boat in the Atlantic and soon to be the Indian Ocean, and they would wreak havoc with that boat. In October of 1694, they would capture two Danish privateers off the island of Principe and would take on more sailors from the uh, ranks of the, those Danish privateer ships. In early 1695, they made it to Madagascar where they would resupply and then head off towards Johanna and the Comoros Islands. On their way to the Comoros, they would capture a passing French pirate ship, take what they had taken, basically pirates robbing other pirates, and some of the men from that French pirate ship would join Avery's crew. So now he's got a crew of 150 sailors and about nine slaves to do the really menial work uh, aboard the Fancy. Now it's time to get down to business. In August of 1692 in the Straits of Bab el Mandeb, he would join forces with Thomas II, Joseph Farrow, Richard Wunt, William Mays, and Thomas Wake, and Avery would then be elected admiral by the rest of these uh, pirates and now he would have six ships and 440 men under his uh, command. They would come upon the 25-ship flotilla of the Grand Mughal out of Surat in India, who were on their way to Jeddah and eventually would go, would go on their uh, yearly Hajj to Mecca. Thomas II would die in battle with the Fatah Muhammad, and his men would surrender and be taken aboard the Fatah Muhammad as servants or slaves, one of the two, and after they had surrendered. Five days later, the Fancy would track down the Fatah Muhammad. Now, this is a big ship. I think it was 1,600 tons. So it was a big, slow ship. And you had the Fancy, a big, a smaller, faster ship that had 46 guns. They would sack the uh, Fatah Muhammad, recover two men, and now they have even more men on the ship as they are now heading towards uh, the Ganj e Sawai and try and take that as their prize. When we come back for part two of this video series, we will talk about what happened on the Ganj e Sawai and why it caused an international incident with the Grand Mughal of Surat, India.